Alright, hello. This is uh, Cairo from Ice Chat. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And I'm currently with um, Mr. Huza in the Ice Chat number four. Today we have Huza. Oh, I think I just lost Huza. Let me see. Alright, Huza is there. <laughs> he is blinking. Alright, welcome, Mr. Huza, on the show. How are you today? Thank you. Morning, very well. Excellent. All Thank right. you. All right. Okay. So, uh, in MCO, just want to get light when we started. So, in MCO time, uh, what have you been doing? Uh, well, it's actually uh, uh, a fantastic time as well for me. <laughs> but, uh, it's where it's a time that I can uh, reset, renew, refresh rejuvenate myself uh -huh. uh, more towards uh, you areas yeah intellectual learning, learning. Mm -hmm. uh, lots, lots of, of interesting things uh, that we uh, had within the mode of industry uh, one first part of that uh, been attending a lot of uh, Online conferences. Ah, yeah. okay, all right. The recent one with uh, tourism uh, ministry, right? On the first uh, so-called online summit, mm. um, participated by more than thousand five hundred industrial player. Wow! This uh, last week, right? Uh huh. Um, well, I, I thank you also. I got a chance now to be live. Uh, with uh, you, uh -huh. yeah. Thank you, thank you. Right. So I'm glad to hear that, that you've been spending a little bit more time uh, in in mm. your house and and doing something uh, new, learning online. I think it's uh, something on the zone right now. And mm. and can be maybe you can share a little bit about what is it that you're going to talk about today and what are we discussing? Uh, well, I'm I'm putting up uh, the specifically on FMB operations right um, the chartering the uncertainties so uh, COVID-19 mm -hmm. at this point of time has actually affected uh, human lives right. it is unprecedented times uh, desperate times we require desperate measures I'm sure yeah. and uh, how the biggest question now is how do we prepare ourselves once the MCO is lifted, right? Um, yes, within the families, uh, as well as the workplace. Mm. Now, the industry itself uh, in in FMB, in fact, uh, just like to give you an overview this morning. Yeah. Mm. So I prepare a bit of uh, slides. Yeah. Okay. Just to go through, we will we'll talk, and at the same time. Uh, I just uh, bring to on uh, what, what I've prepared. prepared. Right. Okay. Just for the good, great. No, I'm glad that you have some preparation over there. Just for the benefit of uh, everybody, that uh, Mr. Huza actually is very popular in uh, FMB industry. You know, he used to be my boss last time in Shangri La Hotel. I remember that very well. I learned a lot from. Uh, from Huza, uh, in in when I was working in Shangri La Hotel in Lafayette restaurant particularly, and uh, Huza and I we are no stranger. Uh, and the good thing about Huza as well, he also won a lot of accolades. You know? He brought uh, the restaurant, he changed the industry, and particularly a lot in terms of uh, gastronomic service, FMB service, and now he is managing and running his own consultancy called Huza Razi Consultancy. Right, boss? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yes. So, um, and Huza has a lot of experience. He has done a lot of uh, royal service. He has done a lot of uh, dignitary service, international service, and and now he's an active activist and also businessman in the FMB industry. So, what you're going to listen to from him is a lot more what's happening on the ground and also at the strategic level. Yeah. So, without further ado, the topic today is about. FMB operation and chartering the uncertainties, right? 
So I invite a lot all the uh, FMB people, tourism people, hotels, or anyone interested, and also the customer of M FMB out there. So join in, uh, so that you can get and learn a thing or two from Huza from his experience, right? So Huza, come back to you now. So what what is what has MCO or PKP uh, do to the tourism and and particularly in FMB? industry from your experience looking at situations mm. okay all right mm. thank you uh Cairo. yeah um all right first thing is that um i would like to point out that uh, malaysia has a, a very active plan we have a very uh, famous brand called malaysia truly asia mm. that has been around for the past uh, 20 years both mm. uh, in the region and abroad uh, particularly, uh, this is actually a result from the last uh, crisis in 1998. Yeah. That's where TDC at that point of, at, at that time uh, has come up with a branding because, because they, they realized realize that crisis uh, need, need to be, be managed. managed. Okay. This mm -hmm. is a very important part where 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, Malaysia Truly Asia was uh, successfully driven out, rise up due to the 98 crisis, right? And 20 years has passed by. There's a lot of uh, things that's been going on. Um, we have uh, some of our identified success is that uh, Malaysia is ranked among the top 10 tourist destination in the world, recognized as world's fifth best shopping destination by uh, Expedia UK. Yeah. And we are well known, very well known for medical travel destination of the year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, whereby our, our medical tourism is in fact uh, so-called the best. Yeah. Right. Wow. And um, 2020, the forecast, uh, we have planned uh, to do Visit Malaysia Year 2020, where yeah. uh, it's forecasted to attract 36 million tourists. Yeah, mm. uh, that generates what will it generate in terms of revenue? Mm. 168 billion ringgit. That's mm. how big it is. So, um, hospitality tourism is in fact the number two. Uh, is in fact the number two industry biggest industry in the country yeah wow okay mean, you mean you mean tourism is the second biggest industry in malaysia yes wow okay yeah mm. okay let me try to move to the next slide All right now uh okay. just to tell you just this. Uza, just hold on can yeah. you can you share the slide i, I cannot see the slide now yes okay all right yes. all right okay can see it now okay no? all right okay. Alright, uh, now looking at the food service uh, industry, when we say F&B, mm -hmm. it's huge, right? Mm -hmm. Humongous. Mm -hmm. Now, we're looking at from restaurant, hotel accommodation, catering, fast food, takeaway, retail, yeah. event exhibitions, leisure attractions, industrial mm -hmm. catering, mm -hmm. transport, even uh, welfare country nowadays, yeah, and oh, social. Yeah. Mm, mm. Okay, so everybody is being affected. Right. But now, uh, there are certain segments that actually can rise, uh, which I foresee uh, will do at best. Mm. And certain area is in shambles currently. Okay. Now, we will get through that further. Yeah. Now, going through the past uh, versus current crisis in Malaysia, uh, there's a lot of lesson learned through the industry. Mm -hmm. It's like a cycle, okay? Uh, okay. I've been through it personally. Mm -hmm. In 1998, there's a SARS, uh, sorry, economic, uh, economic downturn and political uh, turmoil at that time when PKR. And then in okay. 2003, uh, SARS, yeah, came up. Uh, 2008 economic crisis. Now we have a 2020 uh, COVID-19, yeah. which is so different than any other crisis that we had. Yeah. Uh, 
In fact, uh, this is very unprecedented. Mm. Uh, it's totally uh, caught everyone, uh, you know, off guard. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the, I'm reading some of the forecasts, this is actual. Uh, uh, like I say, Visit Malaysia here yeah, forecasted 36 million tourists, mm -hmm. contributing to 138 billion. This is, mm -hmm. in fact, an ecosystem itself in, in hospitality tourism, which also impacted uh, chain reaction to FMB. Mm. Uh, when we say on this, the biggest contribution is actually from China. Um, mm. China is expected, you know, foreign exchange itself from China. Um, this stats is from the MAH uh, in Mesos the, in the other in the other day, right. uh, saying that China tourists itself bringing USD 3.5 billion USD mm -hmm. 3.5 wow. billion. That's imagine. Wrong, huh? So all that is gone. It's like mm. disappear through thin air. Yeah. Are they going to Greece? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, projected to increase twenty percent. Mm -hmm. Twenty percent, three point five million during uh, visit Malaysia year. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. That's really that's a, lot. a lot. So yeah. it fills up Malaysia from uh, you know uh, Genting itself. So from Genting going down JB. Uh, Penang yeah. and all other parts. Mm -hmm. uh, they go from to Singapore, Singapore uh, border cross, crossing to to Malaysia, yeah. and so so 3.5 million uh, tourists is also lost to twin air. Yeah. So we are so, when we say that, okay, who handles this? It's of course the labor force, mm. people who works in this. In this, uh, to, to to be ready accepting this right yeah uh, uh, in this industry so if you look at the breakdown given mm. uh, agro uh, is at ten percent manufacturing thirty seven percent labor right. force right. but service is fifty three percent wow mm. so services include of uh, the hotel the traveling traveling transportation all these services all the eco eco uh, travel system uh, you know component uh sorry 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 no worries uh, well looking at this looking at this it means yeah. that those those uh, projected revenue are now gone right yes that's, that's huge to the economy yes very very huge of right. course at this point of time mm. uh the statistic given by MAH mm -hmm. for hospitality travel, yeah. Q4, quarter four last year, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 2019 shows the lowest lowest growth in 10 years. Yeah? Wow, well, 10 years. Eh? That mm. the successful brand of Malaysia Truly Asia mm. uh, has a, a downfall. So it's already shown in the quarter four. Mm -hmm. Coming in quarter one and quarter two, we're mm -hmm. talking about now my travel hotel already on the books. This is latest released out to the tourism uh, minister last right. four days ago. Loss yeah. of eight billion cancellation. Okay, we are yeah. talking about hotel occupancy declining to below twenty five percent. That so many uh, units of hotels. Right in the, especially in the city, uh, in 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 all over part major city in the country, mm -hmm. so it doesn't fill up. Cancellation losses amounted to two point five billion. Wow! So there's a huge amount of uh, dollar sign, right? Yeah, yeah. Just events we're talking about now going into business events. So Malaysia has been. Uh, a good run um, competitor in the region. Uh, yeah, yeah. You look at like Bangkok, Bali, Jakarta for uh, events. Yeah. So in Q1, the the statistic being released out uh, by the mice by Mesos, mm -hmm. um, quarter one, seven hundred and thirteen major business event has been cancelled. Huh? Mm -hmm. It's three months, 713. Wow. Quarter two, 537 is now already postponed 
to another uh, 10 to 12 months yeah so already next year uh, January uh, you, you know December January it's already yeah. been filled up so they're looking for spaces mm. for whatever they've been postponed now now cancellation and postponement of event amounted to 8 billion ringgit mm. so this is a huge plunge right, right. so this the pandemic has actually uh, you know uh, affected uh, this industry yeah just now Huza, you mentioned about uh, post covid bookings are, are surging right okay because uh, of the cancellation yes, for the cancellation for the events mm. cancellation yeah of course what's been been cancelled or postponed now yeah to find a replacement where to do it okay i give yeah. you an example uh, dubai mm. the world expo dubai um, the biggest expo in the world about yeah. to take place this year in july yeah. it's already been announced to be in 2021 2021 okay okay olympics look at the olympics yeah right? uh, in japan olympic japan it's already announced to be postponed mm. i mean you, you imagine the what is it has affected regionally what is affected globally mm. to, to to us yeah right? pandemic yeah now i have a uh, interesting uh um here slides mm. right um it's, it's it can be used in terms of decoding the economics of COVID. Eh? Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, there's a poten however there are potential winners and potential losers. All right. right? Um, of course, if we look at the winners, of course now medical and supply services are the winners. Yeah. Uh, food processing, retail, personal healthcare, and ICT. These are the top four. Yeah. See? Okay. So now we decode the losers. Yeah. Okay. Tourism and leisure, uh, hospitality, eh? A yeah. aviation and maritime. Hmm. These oh, are yeah. the biggest losers. Eh? Yeah. Automation. Yes, we heard already about, uh, you know, Toyota, Honda is closing down globally and all this. But yeah. uh, tourism itself, we're talking about context of hospitality, tourism. We are at the bottom, the bottom low. Huh? So yeah, yeah. Now we realize on this. Yeah, I, so I kind of like that you mentioned earlier, Uza. Just just a yeah. sec, I kind of like what you say earlier, where where while uh, some sector look bleak, uh, but there are other sectors who are actually growing like crazy, right? I mean, yeah, their yeah. their their yeah. growth accelerated, right? Yeah. So. So, in your opinion, right, would you expect some business model change in the FMB industry post COVID? Yes, definitely, definitely. Mm. We, we're going to go into that. All right. Um, Sorry, I got too excited to see there's a silver <laughs> lining. That's great. You know, yeah, all right. Okay, go ahead. Uh, first, when we decode things mm. uh, in the decoding, uh, I think when interesting enough we'll be looking at the elements of e-commerce yeah e-commerce okay. and ict mm. these are the potential winners so the directive generally for right. f and b yeah. uh, should be involved in this area right ah, okay okay now i'm going to go first towards right. um, the scenario of uh, one scenario of manpower yeah which is currently most talked about which contributes to the country's uh, you know um, revenue yeah yeah we as Malaysians yeah we yeah. look at this this has been released out again um, to the uh, Ministry of Tourism mm. um, we look at wow, the highest, huh? mm. it's the highest yeah <coughs> professional area mm. that, has, that got affected uh, we have also of course like accommodation uh, transport mm -hmm. health, manufacturing and all these people in, in right. uh, involved right. but interestingly if you look at the FMB uh, again with arts and uh, recreation mm -hmm. it's been hit hard uh, at 35% lost job 
Okay. Hmm. Yes. This the the one of the we are in the top three. Uh, affected, lost job. Yeah. Are this are this in the full time sector is, or the part time sector, Uza? This is the actually permanent permanent staff. Permanent yeah. permanent, permanent staff. Yeah. yeah. Part timers. If we look part timers, it yeah. means with no business, the part timers are gone. If we yeah. look at permanent hiring, is no longer valid. Then yeah. the part timers is already out of the, you know, out of the game already. Yeah. So, looking at the unpaid leave status, mm-hmm. also very hard. It means that mm. I knew for the fact that hotels, five star hotels, four star hotels, at currently. Mm. Is doing the practice of unpaid leave to the staffing. Mm. So these are desperate times. Mm. Um, business owners, business owners have to have to survive, right? Yeah. Uh, thinking um, how we want to move forward with this. Yeah. Now we are looking at MCO. Well, China finishes off the MCO for 76 days. Yeah. Right? Wuhan. So mm. we don't know how long we're going to go through it, uh, but I'm very glad that Malaysia currently stands at number one mm. in terms of its medical uh, our rating for managing uh, yeah. during this time of MCO. Second yeah. comes German, in fact, right? Yeah. So everybody knows that. So hopefully. Uh, You know, Malaysians will go through this. Yeah, will stay yeah. home. We can do it. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yes. Right. Okay, so mm. the whole the whole picture that I painted out, if you can see, is very um, <laughs> concerning and very yeah, it's very very bad, very bleak, right? Yeah. Very badly hit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, well, well, yesterday Uza, we talk. We 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 had some uh, feedback yesterday where uh, we talk. We talk about okay, you know, now that the the business is impacted and we have this is delivery, uh, you know, uh, booming. But it's not just about business. You know, food 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 safety. You know, food FMB is also about food safety hygiene. So, how does this going to be uh, uh, impacting? The customers, for example, no. Also, the other side, the 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 someone who does the delivery during the MCO, if it get extended, how how do we uh, from the uh, FMB, especially like you, how do you see this movement? It's not just all business, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the practice of hygiene. Mm-hmm. We will never be the same again after the MCO is lifted. Everybody will have to somehow rather. Mm. Uh, new mm. families and at workplace, right? Mm. Uh, you must know about hygiene practices. Mm-hmm. At workplace, a children system is already looking into a must. It mm-hmm. cannot be something that on the loose. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about uh, the practicing of food safety management system professionally. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, at this point of time. Investment is only being given to a uh, organization which is big, uh, yeah. with 200 and above workers, mm. uh, uh, to go into food safety management system. But there is a concern if we were to do on, let's say, uh, those e-healing on food. Mm. Uh, you know, food panda and grab the source where they took this uh, the food. Yeah. Organ- I mean. Businesses, small business, uh, that that contributes towards uh, the uh, the online food ordering. Mm-hmm. So, how are they practicing that? Mm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. So, uh, I mean, online will be the way to go. No doubt. Yeah. It has changed now. Uh, the style of Of business, FMB is moving towards technological uh, to reach out people out there. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah, with less interact interaction. Mm. Okay, so it means that the assurance system for these sources of food 
it needs to be managed it needs to be looked at so in the in the directive of uh, food safety there's a human system of course the the big the big guys already practicing it like having uh, I've been doing halal consult uh, consultancy myself uh, yeah. whereby it is a it is a priority for the the big organization to have halal as well as uh, FSMS or hazard yeah so the major concern now is the online mm. um, it is a swing that going to be focused at but will it be controlled mm. so another concern in it because uh, foodborne illness can yeah. can derive from these practices huh? yeah. it is being looked at now I, I just want to interesting part go to the next slide right where okay. uh, we're talking about <coughs> moving forward mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, um, of course there is um, an operational cycle that needs to be looked at in FMB mm -hmm. that uh, food service cycle basically to analyze how different food service in variant operation works right, right. so when we talk about <coughs> for the future to determine that uh, it has it needs to determine where the consumer market formulation of policies mm. so this this area needs to be looked at very thoroughly uh, where do we go when we move forward from here uh, do we need uh, a certain uh, SOP from you know MOH needs to come up with SOP for operators so mm. formulation of policies interpret interpretation of demand mm. uh, so restaurant gonna change its, its pers perspective towards uh, the market yeah of course uh, planning and design facilities this will also uh, Re being re relooked again mm -hmm. um, by businesses, all businesses that mm -hmm. wanted to go into technological aspect, mm -hmm. go online. So mm -hmm. then they need to, to, to maybe change. For mm -hmm. those who are already there, maybe it's time to look at their equipment, kitchen equipment program. Mm -hmm. So that be a change. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So the cycle <coughs> needs to be competent. Mm -hmm. yeah. but part where uh, monitoring consumer to monitoring the consumer satisfaction mm -hmm. is, can be done also uh, you know at a pace where uh, in in eight, eight to ten months time uh, people will already know what what is best what 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 is affordable what who is uh, competent out there yeah yeah so there will be an operational cycle to be looked at yeah uh, to, to mature in this coming next after uh, next 10 months after the mco yeah. Uza, okay I, I like the part where you mentioned this right so um so do you expect the the big incumbent players change there's a lot okay. thing to do okay they they already changed for your information okay uh, all right this five star don't work with grab they don't work with food panda they don't work with grab at all ah okay, okay. oh yeah i never ordered a five star so i don't know ah, no. <laughs> but, but now ah. you can see there are five star hotel mm. already tying up with grab food all right so they are policy this is what i meant by change of policies right so the policy from the uh from the from the big uh brand mm -hmm. even the even the okay we look at freestanding fine dining restaurant yeah fine dining with its prestigious approach they never do never across their mind yeah they need to do uh you know online food delivery yeah, yeah. a fine dining restaurant but now yeah. already as we speak for the past two weeks we can already yeah. see okay so this is what i meant there's a swing and change but the you know the the the, the small players yeah they are most of them are close the small players mm. under concept takes food from uh, not a restaurant sometimes right yeah uh, these places are close at this point of time yeah, uh, yeah so that's... there is an opportunity if you can mm. see uh, you know 
big brands investment mm. in, in restaurant taking the opportunity at this point of time to do it yeah. from what i know uh, well i know for the fact that food panda take 30% mm. or what's been delivered out there yeah. so the amount is not as big but mm. affordable yeah so in in another after the mco uh, this area will be looked at as an important swing mm. that is being used for this yeah okay? yeah that's that's where uh, I, I'm pointing out a few. I just want to go through a bit of yeah, this. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. And then prepare. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, after the MCO food service operation, they need to, government, uh, need to have a standard SOP or, you know, and measures that is a need for uh, a guideline for people who are in business events for example mm-hmm. uh, who goes to restaurant for example right we, we could I see that banqueting is the hardest hit in FMB segment mm. uh, anything that goes above then 500 um, events looking at event cancellation mm. it's, it's tough it's gonna be very tough for them but mm. however small niche restaurant could thrive because mm. There are people who still wanted to go out there for f- to to enjoy a bit of freedom, enjoy a bit of freedom. I can say yeah. Yeah. It depends on the tier of spending power in the market. Mm-hmm. FMB industry player will look at uh, a study mm-hmm. to tap in this different various tier of market. Right. Okay? Right. We're looking at from millennial spending power right mm. up to Gen X, mm. uh, you know, by age, by demographics, by there's a lot of things that you're gonna uh, break it down to. Now, if we look at so what what are the the things that uh, is a concern concern? So the measures that some that I foresee, I I forecast that will come up with uh, in FMB uh, areas. No handshake. Okay, so Malaysia has already that uh, welcoming notion. In fact, that was launched by uh, Dr. Sri Kadir Sheikh Fazil. Remember, uh, this was like uh, yeah. years ago. Yeah. Doing the bow for Malaysia. So mm. maybe we can look. We are. Uh, we should use that. You know, right? Shake, right. but put it through your heart. That I find is already there to be utilized by Malaysia. Um, yes, I know in the internet now I have this those COVID welcoming kicking and yeah. <laughs> butt bumping. Yeah, there's something style. But I think for Malaysia, uh, we need to have a unique way, uh, which, which already in place. Mm-hmm. Yes, years. right. Uh, SOP so measures also, also looking at some of it is. Uh, pre-order, mm. yeah, mm. Uh, which yeah. is bad. Um, pre-plan, yeah. Right. Other so, than, so when you say no ready to eat food counter, right? What does it mean? Yeah, uh, buffet. Wow. Picture you know, of food, yeah. On on the buffet is a high risk. Is considered a high risk because uh, anybody can cough and they can lead to another. Uh, outbreak. Oh, okay. For example, uh, if we learn from what's happening now, so right. definitely buffet is a not not a, a good idea. Mm. Um, mm. As ex director of food and beverage, right? I will be very very concerned. Mm. I would to ha- I look at the mass, um, you know, public that come into and in enjoying mm. uh, uh, a buffet mm. at this point of time at this point of time so i'm saying is that at this point of time uh, it is something that to stay away from yeah. yeah okay and then there are practices on time bound seating which is like a uh, uh, seating cycle right uh-huh. uh, determining people at a shorter time to be in restaurant not that they they be there uh, uh, longer time so this can be through seating like for example if dinner time they'll mm. be from 
six thirty to eight o'clock. Mm-hmm. In then there will be eight thirty to ten thirty seating. Wow. So okay. More planned, uh, time bound seating. Hmm. Of course, All personalized. Right. Yes. Um. In any in any form of uh, business deal at this point of time, mm. personalization uh, is something that giving a leap mm. service, okay? Because right. you handle less mass public, mm. and you can be very micro focus mm-hmm. to to collect uh, to ensure getting data. So at this point of time. Any uh, form of market that comes in database mm. is yeah uh, is good as gold. Right. Uh, you want to know uh, people who's confident that going out there. Yeah, you want to know people who rather go to uh, catering at their house. Yeah, it doesn't so, matter. Yeah, so, so with with all this, this Uza. Yeah, yeah, with all this that you mentioned, Uza. So. Uh, what does it mean to be a service there? I mean, this. I mean, you don't need people. That much, right? Yeah, we we only need. Let's say. Let me rephrase that. Not hmm. saying we didn't need not people that much. We need people as of when there is demand. So that's the that's the right word. Yeah. Right. When there is demand right. in accordance to demand. So if you if let's say a a brand. A restaurant mm. managed to get fifteen uh, open house. Yeah, you do during Hari Raya catering, mm. so they can they can plan for a part time, right? Right. But they just focus on into their online or restaurant business. There's only a certain amount of manpower needed. So basically, mm. it's stability that you want. So. Right. I think big brands like hotel mm. will be something that uh, a must for them to utilize their database. They must utilize their database to to explore more of their business. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. You talk about on demand labor service, right? Uh, or, or service personnel. So how do we ensure quality? Is there some some standardization, or is there a way that we can recognize them? Is it a database on them? Is it a free flow? Because see, it used to be when you are working a part timer, you are you are flexible. Nah, I can work in hotel one, hotel two, hotel three, right? Yeah. But are, are you are you look? Do, do you think that going to be the direction, or what's your thought about this? Okay. Uh, at this point of time, there's so many talents out there who is out of job. Mm. Okay. Mm. And you can be classified in many tiers. And mm. those who are uh, six months and below experience mm. with no knowledge, just a part timer, hit and go to a one year experience part timer to a new hiring, and then there are people who are out of job, laid off work. Right, uh, those mm, who are yeah. who experience three years, for example, mm. uh, to a senior leadership. Yeah. Who could be out of job at this point of time? Mm. So there's there's there should be a study on impact on this yeah. uh, in the FMD manpower. But uh, most importantly, a flexibility mm. of the uh, policy in the government now yeah. uh, to to make. Uh, a job opportunity in mm. accordance to demand. Okay. Mm. So what do I mean by that? Yeah. As time goes uh, for the next six months, it's going to be interesting that HR have mm. to handle the forty-eight work hours a week for mm. the um, permanent hiring, right? Yeah. So is that something they can can manage to cope up? Mm. So this is another question: mm. Is it time for Labor Law Act 1955 to be revisited? Because mm. COVID-19 is something never happened in, yeah. in the world. In modern yeah. times, this is the first time. So yeah. there's a lot of things need to be to be looked at in flexibility because yeah. we are also bound by Act in yeah. in workplace. Okay, mm. so flexibility is a key thing. 
um, how do we handle talents and that? So I couldn't give an answer now, yeah. but what could be very clear is that it needs to react with the demand. Right. Successful right. brand, um, they won't keep they won't keep uh, their overhead cost high, mm. but they need to be very flexible in times of need. Okay. At the same time, these talents needs to have knowledge, right? For example, right. like the FSMS, food safety management system. Right. For those who has worked in good brands, mm-hmm. so in place, yeah. both in kitchen and service. Yeah. For those who doesn't have, they need to 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 learn mm-hmm. on this. Okay. Yeah. As simple as typhoid jab. Yeah. Is not is not a compromise anymore. They yeah. must have it. So yeah. we knew for the fact that certain uh, areas, uh, for example, like part timers, we can mm-hmm. look at certain violation happen in part time. Permanent hiring, yes, they have already. There is something that organization ensure of having. Yeah. I'm just giving you an example. Yeah? Right. So when it comes to part timer comes in, they're very loose on it. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So we're looking at practices, uh, the measuring needs that going to change. Uh, social distancing. How do we keep that social distancing for the mm. next six months? Mm. Of course, no shoulder to shoulder. So yeah. how about that uh, meeting incentive convention events? Mm. Right? So yeah. in mind, they're selling that. Uh, all this needs to be looked at. There must be a guideline. Mm. Certain number of people in a space. You know, of uh, we are looking at this point of time. Yeah. It uh, we are talking about four square meters. Yeah. Uh, you know, to have that social distancing. Yeah. I'm not sure when you handle uh, a group of people for 500. Yeah. So, or 1,000. Can can 1,000 be permissible? Yeah, yeah, that's so, right. I'm not sure. 2,000. Yeah. We, we have bigger bigger space here in the country. Yeah. They can fit up right up to 3,000 at one go. Yeah. Uh, we, we, if you look at uh, you know KL Convention Center, 10,000 square meter, yeah. you can fit up, you know, yeah. uh, more than 5,000 people at one time. Okay, so the question is, yeah. we need a directive. It needs mm-hmm. to be worked out, right? So yeah. I'm sure it will come out first. Then, then only brands leadership will work on it, yeah. cascade it down. To their their team. Mm-hmm. What are the practices? Of course, we talk about uh, you know uh, sanitizers and all these things. Right. Uh, gloves usage. Kitchen. They cannot be any more loose end in the kitchen. Right. 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 Oh. Now, like I said, it depends. We are talking about the big brand and towards the smaller brand. Right. So, yeah. Who's that? Uh, yeah, I want to start there for a while. So you see, I mean, FMB. Uh, the last a uh, few years, you could see uh, a trending down in terms of employment, attractivity, attractiveness in the market, right? So, do you foresee uh, with this post-COVID or situation right now, would this make the industry more attractive or becoming less attractive as an employment opportunities or business? Okay, okay. Uh, I like that question. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, to give to give you a Uh, a background, eh? mm-hmm. uh, hospitality tourism. Mm-hmm. Because I'm in MQA, uh, in panel of industry. Mm-hmm. There are about 82 institutional, whether university, colleges, that listed up uh, in the country for anything that got to do with hospitality uh, management, mm-hmm. culinary, food service, and tourism, whether diploma or degree. Yeah. Now. The number one cause after SPM leavers uh, searching for, yeah. right, is culinary. In fact, very yeah. very surprising uh, statistic. Wow, interesting. Huh? That's what it's the that. highest culinary. Yeah. I think it got to do with the impact of TV. You know, mm-hmm. uh, online cooking show, all that, right? Yes. Okay. So culinary is the number one. Mm. Now, this is going to be a swing. Mm. I think. Uh, IT will be the next one to be hit, to get hit uh, for the new millennials. Mm. Um, why? Why I say IT? 
I, I think it's, it, it needs to be a focus on that. Um, we, I, I foresee that uh, the online, uh, less interactive uh, skills, human, you know, uh, will be something in demand. Anything got to do. So if we look at the decoding in the earlier part, it mm. tells that ICT area mm. is in is going to be a winner. So mm. anything that got to do with IT, mm. okay. So people going to change work that dependent on IT. Mm. Work right. dependent on IT. Okay. FMB yes, but anything related to dependent IT. So it means that mm. um, multitasking will be on tech related. Those who are in FMB will yeah. be tech related. Right. Tech okay. The demand. So right. I don't know if the 40 year old supervisor mm. or if he is still a 40 year old waiter right. will uh, that means he is in trouble. Yeah. He, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for the twenty-six year old graduates, mm. yeah, it's already uh, in him. Yeah, he work harder. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. To do that. Yeah, yeah, this is this is interesting discussion, Uzza. You know, we are now, although we subtract a little bit, but uh, I I like the fact that you you have this experience in the in the education uh, industry. So we, I think there's some possibility of some uh, curriculum change as well, right? Post COVID. Uh, in line in hospitality, looking at now FMB and digital and tech, you know, so no longer, mm. no longer they just do only what they have to have tech embedded in their yeah. in their curriculum as well, right? Well, I, it needs to have uh, tech embedded in in all approach. Right. right. Okay. Interestingly, um, I've already have a slide that. that right. Okay. Let's take a look at that. Okay. It's of technology itself. Right. Uh, hospitality is a very tax AV uh, embedded has already put in embedded uh, practices mm. uh, for a long time you know for the past 10 years in fact uh, QR code has already been used uh, in in hospitality especially in hotels yeah. uh, or survey um, guest satisfaction all this has been uh, embedded with their handphones so the usage of First hand uh, handphone for first hand information. Yeah. Very crucial, right? Uh, yeah. Even kitchen equipment already been uh, been used uh, in in big brands. Yeah. So ovens, kitchen, uh, traditional kitchen has been revolutionized with uh, with uh, oven. That can can do most of the work already. Yeah, ah, with okay. a lot of, lot of uh, uh, brand now. For example, we take uh, like Rational, Rational oven. Yeah, they're forefront, upfront mm. when it comes to you know uh, putting out manpower as well as sustainability. So mm. the sustainability approach in in FMB in hotels um, or big brands yeah. has been there in place with technology yeah mm, yeah so it will be tightened up i'm sure um so the use of us in technology is utterly very, very is very crucial now um after the mco there'll be two segments for sure online will be ongoing and explore mm. and then the dining which is smaller it's going to be smaller um, mm. So, but, but at the same time, it's quite uncertain. Yeah, yeah. Because those who make the market confident mm. only will able to to fill up their their restaurant seats. Yeah. They fill up restaurant seats also. There is a decrease in capacity. Yeah. If restaurants before at uh, two hundred seatings, all day dining now could be less than that. To, to take up, right? Yeah. Um, if a restaurant is seventy seats, so it will be smaller. Right. This is what this is what the aviation industry is also talking about right now. Right. So seats will not 
be full it will be purposely reduced purposely reduced mm. so that means one row there could be only one person sitting so you lose mm. that that row with only one right. so if the uh, row of three now is only could be one person sit there mm. so these are the things that uh, the guy that going to come out uh, which i foresee mm, i see social distancing social distancing is mm. uh, is going to be there yeah Well, well, that's great. So, I mean, in all this, uh, what we call a bleaky or uh, a murky situation, right? That I, I, I think there's a need of change to grab the opportunity. Like you mentioned just now, the big brands, uh, of course, the big brands are always uh, ahead. You know, a lot of product equipments are catering the big brands. So, moving forward for the entrepreneurs, for the small time players, uh, mom and pop. Uh, what I call uh, dining place. What what do you think uh, they they could do, or what are the some silver lining that they could have for themselves? At this point of time, uh, sensibly, mm. a grab and go or take away is right. uh, is a practice that they can do to stabilize. Yeah, um, grab and go. Okay, that's mm. the uh, the solution at this point of time. Sensibly, that comes in. Um, there is a concern, I'm sure, that uh, more investment that need to put. I think they will face uh, ins- investment issues. Mm. So that, that's the part that they will face because they need to pump up more money. Mm. Uh, they need to manage their expenses on mm. on manpower. They manage, you know, their their raw materials. Yeah. So they got to minimize that. So to yeah. get stability, grab and go is one of it. Yeah. Now, those who are better, who's doing better, they get mm. they explore more. Mm. Yeah, explore more uh, towards more production like the online uh, food healing. Mm. So they can do more. Maybe from 500 portion to 2,000 portion a day. Mm. So <coughs> they can focus on that. Right. Right. If they already really stab- have stability and can get people come to their restaurant, mm-hmm. and only that online is one segment, and focusing on more top up expenses or manpower for skill services, right, right, which is dining, right, yeah. right. Okay, do you expect some uh, um, major customer change of behavior post COVID as a new normal? That is definitely mm. okay. the market, <coughs> of course. When mm. we talk about uh, human consumption, mm. um, it depends on not only on spending power now. So I foresee that there there is another category, the confidence level. Yeah. Uh, not only a study of of demographics and all that. There need to be a note on frequency of going out. It mm. needs to be there. It needs yeah. to already in add up. Requirement as right. a pointer. So, right. how many times you confident to go out for dining? Mm. For example, this particular restaurant or this particular venue, yeah. right? So yeah. Times that you you wishes to go. So this is an important data to know. Maybe there are people who only willing to go out two weeks once fortnightly or right. once a month or. Or there are people who's very bold enough to. I don't care. I want my freedom. I want to enjoy. I, I have money. I want to spend. Mm. You know? So it depends on that uh, that level where uh, market mm. needs to needs to be defined. It's right. not defined. Even sometimes at this point of time, mm. people who have money mm. doesn't mean they want to go out, right? Right. Right. See, there are people who looks at safety as Utterly the most important thing at this point of time. Yeah, there are uh, mindset that that are bold enough to mm-hmm. go out. Right. So it's just that how we tap uh, the market. Yeah. And we are we're not just talking about the lower market here. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh, the context of people who spends thirty ringgit and below, mm. uh, and going to that hundred ringgit. To 100 ringgit and above, yeah, yeah, maybe 400 ringgit above. Yeah. So uh, the niche will go for 200 ringgit and above. Mm. 
in power. Yeah. Yeah. So that could be very niche. That will come in maybe soon, maybe later. Right. Not now. Right. Do you at point of time they need to there is a need to have food lah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Driving because they need they needs to have food. Yeah. yeah. Have food. So that's that's my next question. Do you do you foresee or do you expect or, or have you seen hmm. some increase in uh, food supplies or raw material? Yes, of course. Mm. Of course. Mm. Now people trapped in their houses at this point of time. Right. right? Yeah. Trapped in their houses. Mm. They can only go out at certain because of safety. Yeah. The repetition of going out is very less. Mm-hmm. With the NCO, everything is less. Mm-hmm. So that's why there's a thriving, there's a thriving uh, activity mm. in this food healing. But after MCO, this number could change. Mm. Right. What I'm saying is, instead of food panda. Mm. Maybe a catering company from the hotel goes to the house and do uh, a feast. Oh, right? all right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is one opportunity as well. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. The, the behavior pattern of the market as well as the organization needs to change. Mm. Um, what is the new design takeaway? Yeah. Uh, takeaway containers. Mm. Boxes. Yeah. Uh, this could be very interesting to see the the IT designers yeah. or sorry the des- the, the, the designers uh, themselves could uh, is one area that could thriving yeah the design artwork yeah, yeah design yeah. artwork of, and then container manufacturing of containers yeah is it is it gonna gonna uh, add to the guideline of food safety management right so are we going back Uh, not looking at sustainability, so right. we're going for back to plastics, for yeah. example. So there's a lot of questions in there because for owners there's pressure of expenses, right? Yeah. Sustainability food boxes uh, yeah. that made of uh, recycle, these are a bit more expensive, right? Compared to those. <laughs> Because plastic. Yeah. Yes. Government policy says that. Okay, yeah. guys. We need to do like like last time. No straw. Yeah. Right? No yeah. plastic straw. That was great. I find that is great. That policy is fantastic. Will it be? Uh, will it be used for food containers? Hmm. Right? Yeah. Oh, the policy makers need to look at it. That's what I'm saying in the cycle. Right. Where that that second stage is important. Mm. These are the effects. Uh, what I'm saying. Right. But in terms of consumption, there's mean and ways to make things attractive. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so people uh, will be less going out, but more attractive. Yeah. Wow. I like I like the silver lining uh, over there. That's really good. Now, yeah. okay. Uh, it seems like there be uh, how can how can the customer consumer uh, know that that's listening here and also out there could help to reboost the F&B industry post COVID. Your thoughts. Uh, everybody has uh, a need to do uh, socializing. Right? Yeah. It's a nature of of people to get together, celebrate life itself. So restaurant is a venue for that. There is always a favorite restaurant, favorite uh, bars, favorite a uh, lot of favorite things, right? Favorite mm-hmm. food, favorite dishes, favorite yeah. cake, blah blah blah, so forth. People will still continue on that. But the sad part, there's also going to be a sad part where after the post COVID, they're going to mm. see that I, the restaurant is closed. Mm. Uh, I couldn't find any more my my favorite uh, cakes or my mm. favorite croissant or my favorite bruschetta or my favorite dish, yeah. right? So there are there, there there's an impact, but people will always find uh, ways mm. or look at interesting things, right? Um, behavior pattern. Mm. Shows that millennials always changing. They mm. never stick to a loyal place. Right. Gen X and baby boomers tend to have a fixed favorite places. Mm. Mm. They could be badly affected if their favorite restaurant closed down because yeah. 
want to see their favorite manager, favorite waiter. So yeah. may, they may they might not even be favorite waiter anymore if the yeah. place you know, <laughs> yeah. not allowed to dine. Yeah. So yeah, talents. This is fact. The talents themselves. Yeah. yeah. So uh, after this MCO, mm -hmm. uh, yes, it will still be a boost um, yeah. for people to go out there. Right. Uh, at the same time, people now knows how to cook better. Right. Yeah. Those who know how to cook, they cook better. Yeah, that's right. Those who don't know how to cook, they learn to cook. They learn to cook. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. One. One last. One last question. Uh, it's almost twelve now. It's twelve now. Yeah. So okay. Uh, do you do you foresee? Okay, now I want to touch something very touchy on legal, mm. right? So it used to be like in the hotel, whenever you go in, anything wrong, you blame the hotel, right? But now, do you see a legal post COVID will be an issue as well, in terms of food safety or customer get infected because of the hotel food and all that post COVID? Okay, very interesting question. Mm. Okay, that's where we have to go before the COVID. Right. The legal when it comes to before COVID comes in the that's why there is HACCP or mm. uh, food safety management system for any foodborne illness uh, handling right. Mm -hmm. uh, organization got to show traceability in order to 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 put away that liability mm -hmm. of legal uh, going to be imposed on that brand. All right, okay? traceability that's. That's the thing, the confidence level in the market, having food safety management system. Right. Now, as for uh, when it comes to COVID, it's it's also something got to do with handling microbial. So mm. it means that mm. practices is the is the brand practicing mm. uh, among its staff or given training among yeah. staff on handling this deadly um, virus so it is a must so practice if you know sanitizers need to be placed minimum it needs to be placed mm. placed everywhere uh, accessibility gloves mm. no buffet for example no no ready to eat food uh, out for display right. in the counter so these are dangerous uh, practices that right. could to you know uh, to dangerous times again mm. from occurring so I think in terms of legal, um, the guideline needs to be to be released out from MOH right. yeah, for public spaces. Then from there, if those who don't adhere or don't follow mm. this guideline, then legal steps could be taken as far as that. Right, right, right. right. At this at this point of time, uh, concern. Everybody is concerned about how uh, FMB uh, gonna gonna be right. without this guideline. Right. Yeah. Or business events. Okay, yeah. okay. Musa, thanks so much. Uh, it's a tough industry. Your final words, parting words. One minute for you. Uh, okay. We need to reset, renew through a new, unique selling points. Mm. Uh, in other words, manpower and talents. Malaysians have to be more multitasking towards technology in yeah. FMB. And kitchen equipments with new kitchen, uh, new purchase programs ready to be in place make your kitchen more efficient uh, personalized service compromising levels on it uh, where where are we at um, that's a need to be to be to be a think tank by the industry player mm -hmm. upgrading of venues restaurant food service is it too old is it uh, Need to be in place with tax savvy. It needs to be looked at more ergonomic, uh, efficient. So, efficiency is in hand. How to 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 look at uh, putting out, uh, maximizing profit, uh, controlling that expenses. Um, yeah. Does the organization uh, able to attract? Um, market interestingly enough towards that brand yeah? right, right. So unique selling point is a key thing this point of time right so in FMB uh, I wish all the best for right. all the industry player as yeah. well as all the colleagues right all the labor workforce in this industry right I'm sure you're going to be uh, rising up 
through the ashes. We need to rise up, guys. We need right. to rise up. We can't. We can't. Uh, you know. Uh, although yes, we we are badly hit, but rising up is a must. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Huza. Online. Thank you so much. Right. I hope to catch up with you again. Thanks for contribution. Uh, with that, thank you so much and bye bye. See you again welcome. next round. Welcome. Yeah, have a good day. Thanks. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Stay safe. Be safe. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, there's a session today this morning. I chat uh, myself and Huza. I hope you learn a thing or two. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye. And tomorrow, yeah, I forgot about tomorrow. So for tomorrow, uh, tomorrow I don't have any session. But next week, next week we're going to have something interesting. Uh, let me share here what we have next week. Next week we're going to have someone, um, someone special. Yeah, someone special I have on next week. Let me just uh, feature here. good all right so tomorrow next tomorrow i don't have any session but next week i'm gonna have two person in the house one is this one we're gonna have on design thinking uh our partner international partner uh dr michael Lurick, on how design thinking can be useful in covid situation and also from one of our Exceptional clients, DHL Express Malaysia, uh, Julian Neo, the MD of uh, DHL Express Malaysia, going to be with us as well on Tuesday, and uh, Michael Uri on Tuesday, right? So Michael Uri session is in the morning actually, about 9 a.m., a bit earlier. So I hope to see you guys maybe next week uh, in this session. Thank you so much. Bye.